all sit with her Queens over, they ain't similar World change of women, we be feeling them All around the world, they be screaming now gonna be like The most common misconception people have about you yourself About me? Yeah Um. The most common misconception A lot of people think that I've noticed that a lot of people think that I'm um, intimidating. Really? Yeah, and I find that weird. It's the eyebrows. <laughs> them sinister eyebrows. Look, I can't help how I'm going to zoom in me. on these eyebrows, okay. isn't it? Wait a second. Um, eyebrows are so dope. Thank you. No, you got to go right to the camera and say it. So no, no. Please. No, that's not going to happen. All right, go If ahead. they can't see it from here, they should get glasses. Damn. All right, but, go, go <laughs> No, I'm joking. Sorry, everybody. Um, but yeah, it's, people have told me I was intimidating. So I remember the first few times that I got told that, I was like, okay, like what's a, what about me is intimidating? What could be possibly intimidating? And so the next time somebody told me that, I asked them, what intimidates you about me? Mm -hmm. And they're like, I don't know. It's just something about you, something about the way you look at me. It just makes me feel small. And I was like, <laughs> I'm sorry, so then I tried to change my countenance. Is this men or women? Um, men. More men? More men than women. More men than women. Yeah, okay. more men than women. Other women, I mean, yeah, other women, actually, I think it's only one girl that's ever told me that I was intimidating. And, um, and, men, and men that say that. Most men sorry, that I'm, said I'm that. Picking, I'm, I'm picking, are they the men who are like, attracted to you? Or just... It's just like they met you and it's like, yo, I feel like you're intimidating. Straight off the bat. Attracted to me. Okay. And, and also just met me and just like, felt like I was off standish and then I asked them why and then they said, oh, because it seems like you're just, you feel like you're bigger than everyone. And so men that weren't attracted to me, I think were intimidated by me because I'm not the type of girl that would like, that they, how they think a girl should be. Mm. Like, I'm not... I'm not like, oh, yeah, Johnny. Like, no, like, I'm not like that. Mm -hmm. So they think that I'm unapproachable because probably more because of the way they want to approach women more than it has yeah, to do yeah. with me. But at the time, I thought that there was something wrong with me. Like, I, I thought it was something about my face. And then somebody said I always look mean or mad. And so I really asked God to help me with my countenance and changing my face. And, and when I'm just thinking, like, changing the way that I... The way that I look at people, changing the way that I, that I, I don't know, I guess just my face when it's resting. I don't know. I don't think I have a resting bitch face, but. No, nah, you don't. No, I don't, right? I didn't think so. You got a face like you're always inquiring about some shit. I am. I am. I've always been inquisitive. See? Your face <laughs> is always like, hmm. I was the kid. I wonder if there's bananas in that fam tree. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> I'm gonna climb the shit out there. <laughs> to, to be honest, earlier I was just thinking, I wonder if the palm trees have coconuts up there. <laughs> see, you see. So, so you get so the the comment so is that your. It's, what I find interesting about what you said is that about um, you feel like the men who are intimidated by you, it's because they're only intimidated because it throws them off for the way they want to approach you. Yeah. So it's like, like if I, it's like, really, I want to go, yo, what's up? Like, you know, I don't know, put my swagger onto you a bit, but I can't do that based on what I see. Yeah. Okay. Or what you perceived, yeah. And it's like, like, nobody would, I mean, I shouldn't be approached that way anyway. Cause yeah. like, so I, would no think it's, I would think it's silly. No. Nah. So a lot of men, I mean, I would, I would, I don't know. I don't know what it is. Like, I think because things, people have a an expectation of what something is supposed to be. Uh -huh. So they don't know how to approach or gauge or do anything because, first of all, one question you should ask yourself is why am I approaching this person? Mm -hmm. What do I want from this conversation or this relationship? Or mm -hmm. just even talking to a, per a person, being an acquaintance is a certain type of relationship. Yeah. Being intimate is a different type of relationship. Yeah. But like you coming into someone's bubble, you have now created a relationship of some sort. So what, what frustrates you most when it comes to to men in that realm of things? Um, 
like if we're talking about um, how they how they deal with women in terms of trying to court them and stuff like that. I mean, honestly, I don't really think it's all about only the men. Uh -huh. To be honest, okay. if I'm gonna be honest, all with right, you. throw the women under the bus. Let's hear it. Let's hear it. <laughs> throw the women under the bus. It's it's just a social dynamic where like women have this. I don't want to say an expectation. No, you of just men, said it. it's fine. They have an expectation. But there's a better word that I'm not pulling. That's from fine. Right now. We'll go with that. Women right. have this expectation. Women have don't get a, don't get ahead of yourself. I <laughs> know. So women have this expectation, and then men try to meet this expectation, and then men have this expectation, and women try to meet this expectation, and all it is is that you're not really getting to know that specific person and how they are. You are now putting your expectation on, on top of that person, whether it be, I just want to have sex with this person. But that person may not want to have sex with you. So now your expectation goes above the actual person and getting to know them and their wants or whatever have you, mm -hmm. and vice versa. So if we go just by how our society is here in America, mm -hmm. women are sexualized. Women are completely sexualized, yeah. Women are sexualized, so little girls, girls that are in high school or whatever, they can't walk around with their shoulders out in a, just like I was telling you, this girl was in a hot classroom and in the South, a lot of, a lot of uh, schools don't have heat. I mean, not heat, they don't AC. have AC. So she has on a dress that's a halter tube dress or whatever. I don't wear stuff like that, so I don't know what the name is, but it's like a dress that's like, it goes around here. Boot tube. And she, <laughs> And she, that's what it's called. Really? Yeah. Oh. Okay. It's called a boot tube. Well, that's what she had on. And her shoulders were out, and her teacher made her, um, wanted her to, to go put on something else. And not like something else, something else, but like a big t-shirt from the school on top of the dress because her shoulders were showing. It's it That says speaks volume alone because men are expected not to be able to control themselves sexually just from seeing a portion of a woman's body and women are expected to cover up to help those men but that's because there are women walking around with their body showing like that and the expectation of those women is that they're ready to have sex with you whereas instead of that woman just wanting to wear whatever she wants because she wants to look good not saying that every woman that puts on a tight bodycon dress is only putting it on to look good there's also probably, most likely, 90% of the time, I could probably say more than 90% of the time, it's more about attention than just looking good. Because you can, if you have a higher self-esteem, you can look good anyway of what you wear. It doesn't matter. But, and that a lot of that comes from hurt and pain and, and just like emotional damage from whatever. So here we have this weird dynamic because I hear that a lot from women. It's, I hear it. I hear this a lot, and I'm kind of glad you said it, so I didn't have to say it. But it's like I hear that a lot. It's like women are like, um, you know, not asking for it. That's like the big hashtag, which I agree. Just because I dress a certain way, you shouldn't treat me a certain way, right? And then men are like, but my programming mm -hmm. socially is like if I see that, I think sex. Yes. And a lot of and that. because and when I think sex, these chemicals get released in my body where I act in a certain way. Mm -hmm. That's just a fact, right? But then the women are saying, but you just, can't control just, yourself. No, yeah, <laughs> women are saying, oh, so not so um, that's uh, you know I think they use that for rape culture and and things like that. And it's like no, you need to be able to control yourself. And then men will go back, no, you need to know that this is how a man is and blah blah blah. Now for me, I'm looking at both sides. I'm like. I feel like it's just a, it's a catch twenty two mm -hmm. dichotomy where it it's is. like what you you pinpoint it you pinpointed it where it's like the society has bred hypersexualized everyone mm -hmm. so that that is a genuine reaction from men and then this is also a genuine feeling from women because look a woman can there's women who get raped and they're wearing a full out burqa yep do you see what I'm trying to say yeah. it, and and going further than that there's women who can't even hide their bodies no matter what they wear. They just like they just they just yep. boom bam bam yeah. yeah everywhere so I truly believe like it's a it's a it's it's a sick it's just a sick mentality we've taken but it's a towards systemic, looking at each other Does that it's a sense? systemic problem exactly it's a systemic problem it's not a it's not an interpersonal problem no 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 yeah, it's a exactly. systemic problem Go because on, break it down. when they when 
when your brain is cultivated in a certain kind of way, Oof. like you pick up pictures and you hold them in your brain. It, just because you can't remember something and be able to speak about it or be able to articulate it or be able to put it down on a picture doesn't mean that it's not there. Mm -hmm. And um, a lot of things, a lot of ways that people are, a lot of ways that I'm not just going to say men because women growing up, if you grow up with a mother who's always showing her body, you can either decide to not be like your mom, but most likely more women are going to, they're going to be like, you know, take, off their yeah, take after their mom because you know, I didn't have a dad growing up and I don't know how to be loved and and I didn't have a dad, I didn't have a father growing up. My brother's father, that's a whole nother story. But like when it comes to men and me receiving love from men, I am very apprehensive when it comes to a man showing me any kind of affection because of my brother's father and because of what my stigma was towards men. A lot of this work that I've had to do on myself, a lot of this hurt and pain and, and like I've always worn really big baggy clothes because I wanted to hide my body I, I hid away from my own femininity because I felt like first thing is that men can do whatever they want and don't have to don't have to apologize for it uh, feminine femininity is weak so I need to be as masculine as possible to get somewhere in this world and, and that, that's, was, that was your protection that was my protection from your, from your experience earlier in your yes life. and that was my protection and like okay this is how I'm gonna get through but then me going out for jobs because I was a girl and didn't dress a certain kind of way I wouldn't get a job and so then it becomes it's more it's more than just a interpersonal thing this is a when I say it's a systemic problem like people are allowed to be this way because it helps the system run yeah so when you have people that are Nowadays, I can honestly say now it's a little better than it was before. Uh -huh. Because even though it's not like people just randomly started getting raped a lot. No, now we have social media so where everybody's hearing about the times when people are getting raped. It's not that it's gone. It's, everyone's, it's, got it's, an, everyone's got an it's, alert. It's, yeah, it's yeah. right here in front of your face now. So it's just like the whole race problem. Oh, this is something I wanted to say. The, the thing about rape is that it's not like... It's not like men are getting taught about not raping when they're kids or when they when they're in elementary school or, or even school. what rape is. Yeah, but men are not having that conversation until college. You go to college and you basically have a lecture about not not being raped and saying no means no is not something men are just grown up and taught. Mm -hmm. But women like if you're in a church and there's a man, he comes up to the little boy, "Oh, young boy, da da da." da. He comes and to the little girl, hi, Susie. What? Why are you touching? Why are you caressing this little girl's face? I mean, you want to go up to Jack and just pat his back? I mean, you can't, shake you, can't Susie's really, hand. you can't really slap Susie's back, though, either. Well, then you need to shake her hand. You can't just, you don't just go, that cultivates a girl. Okay, I don't like how he's touching me, but I have to be okay with it because he's an older man than me. And I have to be okay with it because of this. And because See, he's. He's I get this. what you're saying. See, it's, it's uh, I get what you're saying, right? But then it's like now, now we're becoming too. I feel pedantic about love and and affection. For example, then where's the line? If it makes the little girl uncomfortable, but she feels like she can't say anything. See, th th see, then that's a whole different thing, right? But I'm just talking about in general. It's like being able to, like, we live in a society now where. Your mother is scared, not your mother, but yeah. your mother is scared to uh, reprimand her friend's child for fear of being looking abusive or being too hard on someone else's child when, you know, the community is the community is the most important factor for a child's growth. Yeah. So that kind of care, it's like me, me knowing that I could walk down the street and having to carry myself a certain way because I know that any one of these elders can go, hey, Mikel, what are you doing? You know you ain't supposed to be doing that. Mm -hmm. Get home now. Do you mm -hmm. see what I'm saying? Yeah. They they felt confident enough to stand out there. No matter even if my my mom and my my dad was not around, they felt confident enough to put me in my place because yeah. they looked at me as their child. Do you see what I'm trying yeah, to say? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now I'm it a takes a village to raise yeah. a child. Now I feel like that's so important. Um, that in, including the affection you show, someone being um, feeling uh, comfortable enough to to hold me or to hug me when I'm feeling down, to sit me down, do you know what I'm trying to say, and you know what I mean, and, yeah. and take me in 
as one of their own because that love spreads like if we're only getting love from business like you say your father wasn't there that that wouldn't hurt so much if you had men who represented that specific kind of person in your life do you see what I'm trying to say around you mm -hmm. does that make sense it's like me you know and other children are like I have a godson who doesn't have a father but I've been there in his life and he knows he can he, he can come to me for that avenue yeah do you see what I'm trying yeah. to say whereas no I'm not his dad but there's, there's certain things that he needs as a young man that I can provide. Yeah. Does that make sense? Because men are supposed to be the protector, they're the provider, and, and, not, so, um, and not provider financially. But when people say men are a provider, a lot of people go financial, and anybody can provide for somebody of financially. Men are there to provide, not saying that we, women can't, but men have a whole different perspective of this world. And I didn't realize this. God literally had to reveal this to me because there was like. I want to say four months ago, I really didn't see the purpose of a man. Like, I really didn't. Damn. Like, down to, like, when I say to a core level. Let me just get I out of here. With... <laughs> you be on the beach talking to yourself. Like, I sat with my, I was in the car with my uncle. And I said, explain it to me. Explain it to me. What is the importance of a man and a father? Explain it to me. Damn. And he really couldn't, to be honest. He couldn't. And I said, what can a man do for a child? What can a man do? <laughs> For a child that a woman cannot do. Explain it to me. And he was like, he basically said, I guess you're right. I was like, well, Damn. that sucks. He, <laughs> like, but then I had to, he I was in prayer time with God. Like literally, like I have, I have, I have daddy issues, God. I need, I need you. Cause I don't know. I know that there, if you, you made these men. So there has to be some kind of purpose to them. Everything you made has purpose, no matter what I feel about it. Cause my emotions are my emotions based off of my experience. They're irrelevant because I'm not saying they're completely irrelevant, but I can't base my life and my actions off of my emotions because my emotions change every five seconds. So that's not something that's not a solid foundation. I can base my life off of. So you created men for a certain reason. Explain it to me. And he said, I am your father. Look at the things that I do for you. You do something wrong, it's not like I condemn you or I hold you back or I hold you down. You come to me and I open up to you and I allow you to, to go back and to do whatever you need to do. I'm there for you, just like a father should be there for you. A father's a provider. He's not just a financial provider because obviously as you can see, you can provide for yourself. A father's a provider of wisdom, of guidance, of, of experiences. A father is a protector. He, he, not saying that he protects you from everything, but that's somewhere that's like a safe haven to run to. Your mom is a nurturer. She's also a provider. She's also, a, she's a caregiver in the providing way. But she's, she, you know, your mom is also, it's your mom, you know, like she, your mom's a superwoman, but your dad is supposed to be there as the rock. And a lot of times now, that whole male figure is skewed because men are looked as as upon, looked upon as like, okay, you're looking for sex. Like that's automatically most women believe you're out here looking for sex. And it's a trust thing, a trust with myself, a trust with that person. And that goes for a lot of people. Like men are out here looking at women and say, based off of what you're dressing like oh you're just looking for sex oh you just yeah. look at her she looks good damn like blah, blah blah but who knows do you know what's crazy yeah that's like people don't believe me when i say i'm shy me too you're shy uh -huh. and one of the reasons i never used to i never used to really approach girls because of that thought do you see what i'm saying like yeah. i wouldn't want them to think that's all i wanted from them Sometimes it was. I can't lie. That's just. And you know, I I was never good at I was never good at taking girls off road. Like you know, like seeing a girl on road and going approaching her and chatting shit to get her number. Like I didn't really. That wasn't me. Like because I don't know for something about something about me is that if I'm not genuine, I can't really talk. If I have to think too much, I'm just. I'm not shit. gonna say anything. I'm shit. I can't do not if anything in life. If I have to think too much, then it's not. It's, it hardly ever works out for me. And so. That's one of the reasons, like, I always used to kind of, I don't know, like, I would, I would talk to girls and, or if I meet a girl, even if I knew she liked me, sometimes I'd just be like, I'll just leave it because I didn't want her to feel like I was every guy that she's met before. Mm -hmm. Do you see what I'm trying to say? Mm -hmm. You know? 
That's good. It's a bit mad. A lot, a lot. I don't know if that's good. I think that's good. I don't know.